Hello everybody, it's your boy Doc here, once again reviewing another game I recently just beat. This time it is Far Cry 5. Now truth be told, this is the first Far Cry I have ever played, and out of all the ones I've seen besides uh, the Primal one, this is the only one that I actually showed any interest in. Mainly because Deep South, religious bullshit, I just wanted to see how this goes. Because, you know, if you look at history, people do terrible, terrible things in the name of religion. So I wanted to see how a modern spin of that would go. Turns out it was pretty goddamn entertaining. The setting is as follows. You're a rookie deputy in Missouri Hope County, assisting a U.S. Marshal in arresting Joseph Seed, the head of the Seed family and also a religious cult. Yay! And plan of action is land the helicopter that we're circling around their compound in, right in the middle of their goddamn camp, march up into that bitch, and arrest Joe Seed right then and there. This is what happens when you let the U.S. Marshal plan shit when they don't know anything about the locals. And as you can tell, it went from what could possibly go wrong to holy shit this went so wrong so goddamn fast. And thanks to that plan going sideways, the cult rose up in arms and took over the county practically overnight. Everyone's fucking dying or joining the cult because they don't really have any other choice in between besides resisting! But you know, like most people nowadays, unless you light a fire underneath their freaking ass, they're mostly not going to do anything. Though there are a few people that have the balls to resist. Not many do it right at the start. But you have a chance to do something about that problem. And so you go about the entirety of Hope County taking down Joseph Seed's cult and murdering the shit out of his family. Now, you can go about doing this in any way you see fit because the game allows you to do that, but it highly suggests you start with John Seed, the younger brother of the family. And he's a very interesting case, and by interesting, I mean he's a masochist turned sadist in charge of recruitment for the cult, and he's always obsessed with making people say yes, confessing your goddamn sins because everyone is sinful and this is religious cult that we use the name of God to commit our murders in. Ah, uh, seriously though, it's like these guys are the freaking neo-crusaders or something. You'll have more proof about that later on, especially when you see the wolf things that they get. But yeah, they might as well be the neo-crusaders. See, now I want to see someone mod this game so all the cult people look like they're freaking Templar Knights and they just scream at you going, Deus Volt Infidel! Okay, moving on. As you go about your way, fighting cultists and doing all the missions, or at least the main missions if you're one of those people, you get to find a few rather interesting comrades that are referred to as hired guns. Specifically, you got the typical... AI generated random ones, and then you got the specialists, and the specialists, some of them will really leave an impression on you for one reason or the other. And those specialists are as followed. Best friend and best scout boomer. This guy was probably one of my favorites because he's just that self-awareness that I like. Because I always try to scout, try to see how many of them there are down there, and he just does it for me. I love him. He's very useful when you're doing hunting, too, or if you're trying to do stealth stuff. Very, very necessary if you're trying to do stealth stuff. My wife is pregnant, and I'm bringing death from the skies, Nick Ryan. Now, this guy was probably the one I used the most, too, as you can note from the kill count I got on him. He brings an airplane with bombs and machine guns. Now, granted, I don't know how a freaking guy from Missouri can get bombs legally on his airplane, but, you know, it is what it is. Now, depending on how you are will depend on how useful he is or not, but he is very, very useful for taking down enemy planes and helicopters and also dropping bombs on people like you're dropping napalm on the Vietnamese. Yes, I just said that. Shut up. G.I. Jill. Sniper extraordinaire, Grace Armstrong. This is probably the only person you're going to get in the entire roster that I know of that has actual combat experience. Grace was from the army, 
or the Marines. I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards Army. And she's a sniper, apparently one of the best marksmen in the world. And that's basically what she is. She's sniper support, very useful when you want someone covering your ass if you're trying to go stealth in or, you know, guns blazing. But for some reason, I think it was just me and the personal thing, but Grace does not want to revive me, ever. If I get downed and she's standing over my corpse, nope, she's just, she's just going to stay there and maybe shoot someone, but she's just still let me die. Yeah, I don't know. I like her, but she's like, what the fuck? I have diabetes because people kept feeding me my name. Yeah, it's a bear. His name's Cheeseburger. I don't know why they decided to name him Cheeseburger, but yeah, he's a bear. Very useful. He's a tank. And also, he's so cuddly and fluffy for a bear, it surprises me that he doesn't want to maul my face off. I got daddy issues, so I make up for it for making things explode. Huck Derman Jr. Now, this is kind of what most people would expect a typical southern redneck to act and look like. And honestly, he kind of just proves that stereotype very, very true when people think about it. Now, not all Southern people are like this, of course, but he's he's a prime example of what a lot of people think that Southern people are. <laughs> but hey, he's entertaining. The shit he says is pretty fucking funny. And he comes with a rocket launcher. So yeah, excellent anti-vehicle person. He's also cousins with the guy who's right beneath him. And if you have him and the cousin together, they're pretty fucking funny too with the shit that they say. Like I said, very useful anti-vehicle person, and also kind of entertaining. Uh, killing cultists gives me such a raging boner, Jess Black, who's apparently the niece of the one guy who helps you at the very beginning of the campaign missions. But we'll not worry about that right now. She's got a bow, she's pretty handy when you're doing stealth stuff. Very useful if you're trying to do it that way. Now, on a personal note, I'm kind of meh about her character, but I also appreciate it at the same time. Because Jess here is an example of when everything goes to chaos, there's people in there who fucking thrive in that shit. That's what Jess Black is. She even openly admits saying that she enjoys killing the cultists of Eden's Gate and she just enjoys the overall situation even though it's kind of fucked up. Like she, It's like a love-hate relationship with her. She even goes as far as like saying, you know, when everything's over, like, what am I supposed to do with my life? And I'm just like, become a hunter or a bounty hunter? Kind of the same thrill, but not as much. So Jess adds a bit of an element that actually is real. And the whole chaos creates people who just want to survive and people who thrive in that bitch. Next is, I'm adorable and you'll let me feast on human flesh, peaches. Which I'm just like, going through all the animals, I'm just like, who the fuck names these people? Turns out her owner is a very, very mean old lady, and I'm just like, I could kind of understand how you managed to tame a cougar of all things, but I'm just like, really? Peaches here is pretty good for the stealth route and also for hunting. Because... As a cougar, stealth is kind of their thing. They sneak up on people and bite their fucking necks. And you're just there when all the shooting and the bodies are going. And I just see peaches, like, feasting on a body. Granted, they don't show you anything because there's so much you can show in a video game. But the motion's there, and it creates the image of, like... Okay. I'm... I, I, I'm, I'm questioning how this is working, but it is. So, yeah, the only way to solve a cult problem is with the barbecue. And by barbecue, I mean flamethrowers, Shark Bosha, who is the cousin of Herc, as I mentioned before. And personally, I like him the best because he's just a whole bunch of crazy. <laughs> and I, I like that personality of his. Now, when you meet him first, he has a flamethrower and you help him kill what's referred to as angels, which we'll get to that later. And from there, he just gets a shotgun that also has incinerary bullets. So, yeah, it's all fun. Plus, when you call him initially, he always comes with a truck with a mounted turret on it. So I'm just like, that's a plus. That helps a lot, buddy. Thank you. Now let's go kill more cultists. 
And like I say, you get Shark together with pretty much anyone who's a human, and he creates a lot of funny conversations. Like, he's hitting on Grace before. Uh, him and Herc have, like, the craziest shit that they say, and it's overall, like, very, very entertaining with him. So even if you don't like him for his weapons or whatever, I mean, you can't go wrong with Flamethrower regardless. But he's very fun. I like him. And last but not least, Cougar with the Chopper. Yeah, you heard me right, Cougar with the Chopper. Adeline Duman is the divorced wife of Huck Sr. And obviously, if you didn't draw the dots already, Huck's mother. However, I did try to pair her with Huck before, and I haven't experienced any dialogue between the two. So, I don't know. That might be me a thing. But yeah, Adelaide's very interesting as a character because, again, she's a cougar, and she has all these sexual innuendo quotes and all this other crazy shit, and it's hilarious. You even get to meet her uh, current boy toy or boyfriend or whatever, not to sure i'm on their relationship right now yeah and he's kind of weird to say the least but hey to each their own now i did get a few funny conversations between adelaine and nick up there because nick's just one of those people who are just like anything that adelaine says nick just doesn't know how to say anything to and it's kind of funny because it's that awkward bullshit relation but yeah so Pretty straightforward. She brings in a chopper, has machine guns. Chopper gets shot down for some reason. She's still up. She can come as a gunner. Has a very good, I want to say, eagle eye, in a sense, because I've had her on the ground before a few times, and she's pretty goddamn accurate with a rifle. So, it depends on the situation, which, you know, her chopper's better, or, you know, her additional fighter would be better. I use her discreetly. Mainly because, especially later on, like, choppers get shot down like fucking nothing happens. If you're not moving around like a crazy fucking maniac like I do sometimes. But, you know, it is what it is. Useful, kind of funny, and overall, that's that's all the specialists that you're going to get. Now, as you notice, they have two tabs on the thing. Specialists and fighters. Fighters are those AI recruited people I've mentioned before. You can have up to three of them in your roster. They're alright. Some of them have pretty interesting dialogues. Others are like, okay. So, there's a lot of them to choose from. And that's the best thing about this game, really. You can do it however the hell you want. You can be stealthy. You can just murder things in explosive ways you can steal a helicopter like i'm doing right now and just literally strafing the fuck out of people occasionally shooting rockets if you got rockets equipped to the damn things the only thing that kind of annoys me though with aerial combat at least with uh using rockets and bombs and shit is that when you run out the thing tries to make you pay money in order to replenish your freaking explosives now, granted, this is an easy fix. You just literally steal another helicopter that has explosives and, you know, just use it from there. But anyway, you get to see, like, a lot of crazy shit going out through this game and also a lot of, like, why the hell are you not dead moments like this person right now. Literally got chain reaction with that explosion, hit a freaking tree, and somehow lived. Go figure how that works. But anyway, it's entertaining, too, if you actually do a lot of the side missions because... That's where a lot of your comedy shit comes into play. For example, this one that I'm doing right now, this is where you try to bait these angel fuckers, and those are those things that are glowing right there. Now, angels are basically like zombies. I'll explain a little more on how that shit works in a moment, but yeah, you put down this bait thing and all anarchy happens in the side mission. It was fucking crazy, and I loved it. Back to what I was saying, like I said, there's a lot of shit you'll find out that are pretty crazy. I even got out the map one time, and there's also some interesting sites that you'll see too that make you question why is this a thing, and how did this happen? And even if you just skip like the main to the main story mission stuff, you get to see some pretty interesting things even regardless. For example... That archway with all the freaking ravens painted on that shit. That was fucking creepy when I saw that shit. And hey, I finally got to answer the question. Helicopter versus World War II era plane. Who wins? Turns out, 
It's the helicopter, bitch! Going back to the main story, when you gradually work your way up and build up resistance points and stuff, there'll be certain instances, roughly like three per each region, where you're gonna get your ass kidnapped in one form or the other. And it somewhat annoys me, because when you get kidnapped in certain ways, and especially later, with the later kidnappings, there's certain things that happen that don't allow you to do certain other actions afterwards. And me being someone who wants to experience as much as I possibly can, I'm one of those like completist type people, but I'm not too zealous about it. I try, but if it's too much work, I just say fuck it. But it's like things that I'm just like, let me finish what I'm doing before you kidnap me, you douchebag. And it's just, it was just a turn off. But overall, not too bad of a thing. You get kidnapped by each of the people. John, Jacob, or Faith. And they kind of explain to you a bit on how they perceive Joseph here. Going about, uh, you get an idea of what they are, who their characters are, and all this other fun shit. And also, you know, the beliefs of Eden's Gate, obviously. Because everyone's obsessed with trying to turn you to their faith instead of just straight up killing you. Because... We're people of God. We want to save as many people as possible, yet we kill everyone who isn't a non-believer. Yet we don't kill the one person who's causing us the most freaking trouble. Yeah. And you wonder why I don't believe in organized religion at all. Eventually, once you cause enough of a thorn in their sides, you'll cause a confrontation with one of the three heralds, and, as many people probably did, I started off with John, murdering him after having a dog fight with him, which I can't fucking plane to begin with, so that just turned into me going on the ground with a machine gun and just gradually shooting at him until he fucking died. Which works, surprisingly! After your miraculous dog fight, John somehow survives, makes it to ground, and then you have to either kill him before he gets to his compound, or as he gets to his compound. Either really works. And in typical villain style, he gets in his last saves before he miraculously dies, which appeared to be me punching him to death repeatedly. I just took a bullet to his head just to be safe. I'm, I'm a firm believer of zombies, and I do not want to risk that bullshit. And then you move on to your next target, which can either be Faith or Jacob. Personally, I went with Faith. Faith is a rather enigma case in comparison to the rest of the family. And personally, given how she is in the, quote, bliss, how she moves, how she acts, and all this other crazy shit, I firmly believe that she is a goddamn witch, and I will stand by that belief, thank you very much. Faith, as hinted by her name, is in charge of keeping the faith with Eden's Gate's members. How does she do this? Quite simple. Preaching the words of the Father repeatedly over and over again while getting everyone addicted to the bliss. And the bliss is something that's like an acid trip had fucking babies with steroids, okay? It's crazy how insane this shit freaking is. What is the bliss, you ask? Well, it's something that's made from this bellflower-looking thing. It's basically nature's insane acid trip. And yes, you can overdose on it. And by overdose, I mean melt your fucking brain. And by melting your fucking brain, I mean you basically turn into a zombie. This is where the angels come in. Faith makes these things. They are basically the closest thing you're ever going to get to a zombie in this game without it actually being a zombie. Now, it's not limited to freaking humans, no. Animals can overdose on this shit, too. And they... they bend the laws of fucking physics. Basically, standard issue angels can only be really, really killed for sure with headshots or burning them to death. You try to do the chest shots, they might go down, but they'll come back up again almost all the time. And you have to put more bullets into them for them to go down again. As you can see, Faith is really problematic. On top of this shit, she's also a goddamn witch. Just like in her brother's territory, when you fuck things up enough, she'll come trying to strike at you. 
which she gets to use her witch fucking powers to fight you, floating, shooting these energy ball lasers things. If I had my flamethrower, I would be burning the witch, but unfortunately I didn't, so I had to make do with bullets. Eventually, you snap out of the bliss-induced hallucination that you're in, and somehow you manage to gash Faith across her face. And then she dies by drowning herself. Yeah, I don't know. Guess who's next on the Kilorama? It's Jacob Seed, the only man in the entire family who has any military experience, and in my personal opinion, he is the most disturbing. And quite frankly, the most terrifying. He's a veteran of the Gulf War and in charge of training all of the cultists. And quite frankly, his training regime is insane by other people's standards. Not because it's tough, no. It's because of the use of live freaking people as target practices. But that's not all. Not only does the people that he trains become lethal killing machines, he knows enough psychological bullshit to turn anyone into a fucking sleeper agent. And by sleeper agent, I don't mean you hear a code word and you suddenly speak in Russian, no. I mean sleeper agent as in you're in a fucking trance killing how many people and you don't even freaking realize it. Now, additionally, the reasons why I believe that out of the three, he is the most problematic, the most terrifying, and the one you should probably kill first thing off the bat is because I noticed a lot of key things in this region that he's in that aren't seen in the other two. Now, yes, you see constantly people like being hanged from bridges or crucified or stringed up in some way or the other, but... Jacob's territory has that in fucking spades. He goes out of his way to murder people, culling the weak, making it where only the strong will survive. And just because of the extra mile he does this in, it's it's crazy. And out of all of the three brothers, I kind of agree with a lot of his points, and that's what makes it even more terrifying, because... Even if you agree with someone, it takes insane amount of balls to actually implement it. And in the fashion that he does it, it's crazy. It's like he's trying to revert everyone's minds back to like the medieval ages where you just murder someone for like looking at you fucking weird. Only it's the excuse of the weak die and the strong survive. Now yes, John's terrifying in his own right because like I said, he goes out of his way to torture the shit out of people in order to confess their sins and make them say yes. Yes, Faith is also pretty fucking terrifying for her masterful use of the bliss being a manipulator and the insane amount of brainwashing bullshit she can do to someone. But it's Jacob. In my opinion, it's Jacob who is the most terrifying of the three. And he doesn't give a fuck. Fuck how many people he kill. He doesn't care what the hell he has to do in order to fulfill his duty. That's who he is. He's a goddamn soldier. You can tell how professional he is and how different he is from his other two siblings. And it's, like, insane because I just instantly was like, this guy needs to die. Fuck the other two. They can die whenever. This guy needs to die first. Which is ironic because I ended up killing him last. And that's the thing, too, like, with that psychological bullshit he freaking does, he doesn't even need to kidnap you anymore at certain points. You're, like, subconsciously fucking programmed with your musical bullshit that he pulls off. Which, again, also really pisses me off, because this is the one region where if you don't do certain missions before these kidnappings start, you're not going to be able to do them. And this, this annoyed the fuck out of me, but I'm just like, alright, fuck it, we'll go with it. In the end, though, his programming actually works, and you end up killing someone who was part of your circle, which is like, again, my point of how fucking terrifying this guy is. But because you are, in a way, free of your programming at that point, you go hunt him down and you freaking murder him. However, he is the only region head of the Eden's Gate cult, where when you kill him, you don't liberate the region. Because he's trained his people to survive without him. And again, this is the point I'm trying to make. 
Jacob is the most fucking terrifying of the three. And then you take a step back and realize Joseph's seed is even more terrifying because he manages to captivate all these different people and that's what makes him the greatest goddamn threat out of the lot of them. Speaking of Joseph, every time you kill a member of his family, he goes about like this speech like he's talking to his followers, or maybe it's to himself, who even knows. And he explains a bit about the like, final words, if you would, about the member you just killed. Now, given how this goes, you only get to hear two of them before like, the third one where he's like showing a moment of weakness, like breaking his normal characteristic, and he just loses his shit for a moment. So, in my opinion, though, because I looked this up, I looked up Jacob's uh, backstory thing because I didn't hear that. I killed Faith and I heard hers. In my opinion, Faith is a bit more interesting than Jacob is because Jacob's the typical, you know, he came back broken from the war. And, you know, he, did, he, he thought he was a tool. He didn't know what to do. And I took him, and I told him what to do. Yeah, that, that's, that's basically the gist of it. Faith is more interesting because it shows that she wasn't the first person to take the name Faith Seed. She was the most devoted but she wasn't the first one, which begs the question, how many did you go through? It's little little details like that that I'm interested in in times. But anyway, after you murder the rest of his family and basically liberate almost all of Hope County, you go back to where it began, his complex. Only this time, there's not a bunch of fucking crazy cultists all gathering around you, about to swarm you and maybe kill you at a moment's notice. Only you're greeted by the man himself. And almost all of your specialists and a bunch of other people that he somehow brainwashed along with their hostages. And he presents you with a choice. Either keep fighting or get the fuck out of my county. You have a choice. This is where the ending's different. But obviously, if you're one of those good sport people and you like the good fight, you're obviously going to resist. To which, Joseph Seed turns out to equally be as much of a witch as Faith was, because all this crazy bullshit goes on as you're fighting. But hey, it's all good. You want to know why? Because the greatest thing you get to do after you somehow break the brainwashing of all your friends is mow down Joseph Seed with a goddamn NG-42, man. That was the highlight. I love that fucking gun, by the way. MG-42 for the win! But then, surprisingly, he's not dead even though I shot him enough times with the MG42 to make fucking Swiss cheese out of his body. He looks at you one last time, speaking crap, about to arrest Joseph Seed when you find out Joseph Seed was right all the long! Everything you did was wrong! And he was right! And now the world's ending because some asshole, probably Russia, but I wouldn't put it past either North Korea or China either, decided to start the nuclear holocaust and fuck up everything. But hey, look at it this way. No more corporations and asshole politicians telling you what to do. It's just you're going to have to do with the nuclear fallout. And guess what? You spend all 17 years between now and the next game with Joseph Seed in a fallout bunker. Don't you feel awkward slash honored? Aside from the whole when you get kidnapped inconveniently when I'm in the middle of doing something that irritates the fuck out of me, I rarely had a complaint with this game. I had decent fun, I got some fun moments into it, I loved a lot of the characters, story was pretty goddamn interesting too. And you know, for my first Far Cry game I've ever played, this one was actually a pretty good choice. Overall, I give Far Cry 5 a 9.5 out of 10. So what do you guys think? You agree with me on this?
maybe suggest other Far Cry games for me to play. I'm kind of considering doing The New Dawn, which is the sequel, right after this one. But hey, who the hell knows? Leave a comment below and we'll bring this discussion to a head. Mm-hmm. Get her done now.